Hey, what's up guys, Matt with the Movement System. In this video, we're gonna talk all about plyometric training and we're gonna specifically cover the science of plyometric training. This is really important to know because if you just see a bunch of plyometric exercises and you just randomly incorporate them into your workout without understanding the science, it's really hard to get an effective result from that. We're gonna cover the basic principles of muscle physiology and the adaptations from an active muscular standpoint as well as from a neuromuscular standpoint and help you understand what that means so that way you can make the most of your training. Let's go ahead and dive into it. Okay, so to start off, plyometrics are defined as exercises involving repeated rapid stretching and contracting of muscles such as jumping and rebounding to increase muscular power. So what this means is that plyometric exercises could be box jumps, sprinting, depth jumps, lateral jumps. There's a ton of options for plyometrics, but they're quick, rapid movements that are designed to increase muscular power. Plyometrics develop the specific power that's associated with very low resistance, such as just using your body weight or very little additional weight. This is different than using Olympic lifts to maximize power with really heavy loads. All right, so from a basic muscle physiology standpoint, we have two primary factors that are allowing us to jump and sprint. One would be the active muscular component and two would be the neuromuscular component. And we can do specific training for either of those. If we didn't have our muscle spindles, which is our stretch reflex, we wouldn't be able to jump very high or sprint very fast. That stretch reflex contributes a large portion of the force for sprinting and jumping. Plyometrics really involve training the neuromuscular component more than the active muscular component. Ideally, you're combining your plyometric training with a solid strength program, and the strength program is helping you build that active muscular component that allows you to forcefully, concentrically contract your muscles under load, and that's a really big foundational piece, and then the plyometrics are more specific to the neuromuscular adaptations. What do we mean by neuromuscular adaptations? That means the way that your nervous system is activating your muscles. By training the muscular coordination of your nervous system and the neural pathways connecting to your high threshold motor units or your type two muscle fibers, we can more effectively rapidly contract our muscles and take advantage of the stretch shortening cycle. Now here's where it gets really interesting though. We can do fast stretch shortening cycle training or slow stretch shortening cycle training. And you might just think, okay, well fast sounds better, right? Like we wanna get fast, that's why we're doing plyometrics. And in a lot of cases, we will use the fast stretch shortening cycle, but we have to make the distinction between when it might be more effective to train the slow stretch shortening cycle. The fast stretch shortening cycle is characterized by very short ground contact times, less than a quarter of a second. Exercises such as maneuverability, where we're running and we're changing direction slightly, and we're just planting the foot very quickly, or max velocity sprinting, or depth jumps with really short ground contact time, those are all examples of fast stretch shortening cycle movements. If we specifically pick exercises in our training that involve these very fast short ground contact times, we're going to preferentially train our max velocity sprint times as well as our maneuverability. This could be really good for athletes who really need to maximize their max velocity sprint, like sprinters, as well as maybe a lacrosse forward who needs to move very quickly and maneuver around other players. It could also be good to train this fast stretch shortening cycle for a baseball player who has to react very fast to the play, as well as reach max velocity while base running or trying to field a ball in the outfield. So designing a plyometric training program that's specific to the fast stretch shortening cycle can be really effective for this group of athletes. But it's also really important to understand the benefits of the slow stretch shortening cycle. And this is slow, but it's really about 0.25, so about a quarter of a second to a half a second in ground contact time that we're using for this slow stretch shortening cycle. So these are still very fast movements. If we're training with hill sprints, change of direction like a 5-10-5 drill, where we're changing direction 90 degrees each way, or doing things like a counter movement vertical jump, those are all exercises that are specific to the slow stretch shortening cycle. These types of slow stretch shortening cycle plyometric drills often involve larger joint excursion. What this means is that instead of very quickly reacting and maybe we only bend our knees 10 degrees, 15 degrees in a maneuverability drill or a depth jump that's a very quick and short ground contact time, 
By contrast, in these slow ground contact time movements, we might be bending our knees to greater than 90 degrees. We might be getting all the way down to touch the ground and change direction, which may take half a second, 0.6 seconds, 0.7 seconds. These are not by any means better or worse than the fast stretch shortening cycle drills. They just train different muscular components in different physiology. These larger joint excursions are going to take more of an active muscular component rather than those fast movements which relied a little bit more heavily on the muscle spindle response. You can think of it this way. Muscle spindle response is dictated by the rate of stretch. If we have a very short, quick movement that's rapid stretch like the fast stretch shortening cycle, more of that force is going to come from the muscle spindles. Our slow stretch shortening cycle movements are going to be bigger joint excursions. You're going to be getting all the way down and all the way back up off the ground, for example. That's not going to be as muscle spindle dependent. We're going to actually have to train starting from like a crouched position or starting on the ground and train these larger joint excursions in order to improve those movements. So for our wrestlers or our judo athletes that are more strength based, they need this strength through larger range of motion or for maybe a soccer defender who's gonna to have to make these 90 degree change of direction cuts and really have these longer eccentric movements to slow down from max velocity, things like that, those athletes are gonna require this slow stretch shortening cycle movement and training. So overall, I hope this video helps you understand and categorize the plyometric movements that you see. It's great to know 25, 50 variations of plyometric exercises, but we have to understand how they specifically help our athletes and train the fast or slow stretch shortening cycle. By understanding this, you'll be able to program better and get your athletes better results. If you want to see more information like this, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any future videos. If you do have any video recommendations or topics that you want me to cover, go ahead and drop a comment below and I'll try to cover it. Make sure you're following along on Instagram as well at The Movement System. And if you're enjoying these videos, go ahead and tag me in your Instagram story and I'll try to repost you. Thanks so much for watching guys and I'll catch you in the next one.